What is up, everyone? Hopefully, you are having a great week. I have two good friends to my right, uh, Kyle Welcher, Hunter Shryock. Listen, we've been reeling a few bass in, and you'll see some of this content on the channel. But um, look, man, we're uh, we're getting ready for bass fishing season. Getting ready for bass fishing season, that's it, for sure. The 2023 season, 2023 season is upon us. It's time right now. It's it's winter. It's the best time of year to get out there and have the lake kind of to yourself. It is. But it's the busy time of year, so we don't get to experience a lot of time for a lot of us. So kind of it's good to get away and kind of go fishing for a couple of days. Now, a lot of people, you know, <clears throat> they, they see us competing day in and day out. They see you guys competing on the Elite Series. see myself and a lot of the other guys competing on the, on the BBT, and it's like – realistically our job never stops you know and, and and i think this is something that's interesting you know you look at <clears throat> you look at the anglers do you do you feel like personally do you have like goals that you try to set in the off season like to work on your game or do you just sort of like take that time to sort of like step back and like not really like not really do much just sort of step back maybe deer hunt a little bit which a lot of people do um, like what, what's your, sort of your process, you know, I, now we're sort of getting into the, the, the goods now, now we're starting to get into the actual season, but where is your transition there? Do you, do you sort of have a game plan and what's that look like? So f- for me in the off season, it's all about, you know, getting organized for one. Cause yeah. after a tournament season, it is a mess after, you know, everything's everywhere. I always focus a lot on like health, trying to eat healthier, start exercising regularly, all that stuff. Cause we're on the road. I, st- I usually start off the year doing good, and then mm-hmm. by the end of the year, I'm just, you know. It goes to hell. Yeah, it, it goes quick. bad quick. <laughs> and then play, play a little poker in the off season a little bit, too. So, that's kind of my, my transition. So, that, that's what I do. That, and, and you know what's crazy is I have two, like, well, you know, you fit. Now, you you played poker professionally. Now, now, you went to the professional level in motocross? Yep. So, I have, like, two former professionals in another <laughs> sport that are yeah. now professionals <laughs> That's, that's pretty damn cool. Right. That is yeah, but really the, cool. Poker is very much a lot like fishing, though. Yeah, the mental aspect yes. of poker. Yeah. Like, you always have that, like, that look in your eye. I never know, like, when I'm talking to you, if you're really telling me the truth or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, he knows how to bluff, too. He does. Oh, gosh, dang, man. It's, it's unbelievable. Now, do you wear sunglasses, like, when you're... When no, you're, I when, don't. You don't? I don't, no. A, a lot of times in poker, like, if you're playing in Las Vegas or couple of the biggest cities in the country where there's like thousands of people playing a day yeah you can get away with doing that and you know just kind of being secluded off but if you're playing like a casino that might only have one big game running you kind of have to like understand that you're providing an entertainment value for the players that are coming in recreationally like if you come in and you're just quiet wearing sunglasses trying to act like super negative to them and stuff like they're not going to play with you, you know, like <laughs> like they'll find this, something else to do this shark's so, trying to take my money exactly, I'm that's exactly right i'm gonna See, go nah, waste this money it. elsewhere <laughs> See, so you gotta look a little bit. You gotta look like like Kyle's. Like, come here, nah, sit by me, buddy. Hey, come, come on, on. yeah, yeah you know how to play. play? <laughs> I don't try to like coerce them into playing. I just don't want to be the reason I run them all. You know, that's fair. That's, that's that's why I look at it. So, so Hunter, now, now, do you have a game plan like in the off season? How do, how do you sort of process that? And like, what do you sort of go through? I think going off of what Kyle said, you get organized. Number one, yeah, um, and then kind of look at the schedule for next season and kind of set, you know. I need to look at this, this, and this lake, like as far as like studying, mm-hmm. and then obviously fishing wise, it's probably my favorite time of the year to fish, just because, like you said, not as many people fishing. It's cold, um, the days are short, everybody's in the woods, and you can typically go out there and catch the biggest bass of the year uh, when it in the winter time. So that's probably my favorite time to go fishing. But I always write down something to work on, like this year. I needed to get better with my left-handed roll cast. And I know y'all can cast with your left hand, obviously, but, like, mm. like very efficiently casting left-handed. So I, I ended up cutting me a little rod down. Hmm. So I had a broken rod, and I cut it down short. And so then I have that rod in my house with a reel, and I just sit there and do this all the time. And you can put line on it. And, dude, I can actually skip a dock now pretty – not it's not as good as my right hand, but I can skip left-handed. Right. So that's one thing I improved on this season. Jeez. Or this off season, I should say. All right, I'm not gonna tell you guys what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna. Say I don't anything. do anything. No, no, I feel no. I, I do. I you know. I obviously you know. Um, 
you know, there's always a game plan, you know, in the off season. But yeah, I, I need, I need to, I do need to actually get a lot better on my left hand. So that's that's that was actually my net. So oh, I haven't really worked things, on. I haven't, I haven't work actually on. worked through that <laughs> list. I haven't actually done anything like I could accomplish this. But no, nah, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, now nah, I'm just gonna leave it alone. Yeah. I'll so t- what do you do? What do you do in the off season? To me, I um, I still, I you know, what's crazy is I you give a to, little bit of the game plan up. Ah man. I used to deer hunt a lot. <clears throat> yeah, then you stopped and won two AOIs. I did. I did I, <laughs> hey, actually, I didn't think about that. <laughs> I didn't actually think about that one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so like I used to deer hunt a lot, and then I think that like that also family came. You know, you have kids, yeah. and so like that was sort of a, a big transition. And so, uh, you know, I think a little taking more time in the fall to sort of spend time with the family. Um, you know, contract negotiation is something that takes a lot of time and takes, effort. Yeah, it does. It's just months of it, and people don't realize how much time it takes to, to sort of set up your boat, especially when you come oh out and do boat ran. It's a really, it's a really <laughs> a lot of work goes into that. I I thought it was a lot of work just trying to get one boat together. Imagine a, a whole new, a whole new boat. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit different. So, so a there's a lot into that. Um, but I, but I also like I sort of like taking a taking a you know a little bit out of your page of like I have a list of things that I look at and I want to accomplish in the off season. Now, am I going to accomplish every single one? No, but there's certain things like techniques that I'm like, hey, I want to maybe like when it gets cold enough, I want to be better at maybe trying to learn how to float and fly fish. Mm-hmm. Or I want to learn. Now we don't fish a lot of those in those conditions, but like I think there's times that you know there's certain techniques that you know you're probably not as good at as you could be, and so you force yourself. I think it's it's easy for an angler, a lot of anglers out there. We tend to want to go and just do what we are good at. Right. You know, I want to go flip a jig, or I want to crank, or I want to, you know, I want to go fish fish and use active target or live scope. You know, <clears throat> There's a point where you have to force yourself to put yourself in a bad position or a tough position to learn because you only learn from that. So, like, I feel like that's something that I try to do a little bit more. I don't do it all the time, but I try to do a little bit more in the offseason. And you also, but you you typically game plan that off of your actual, like, your term of season. So like if you're going to Florida, you're like, man, I I, I ain't worried about active targeting now. I'm right. more I'm more worried about my my punching setup. Yeah, that's why what's we're, that look we're like? We're here at Lake Lanier and we got Okeechobee in the first, yeah, <laughs> first tournament. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what, what, what is your guys' schedule this year? Uh, half. We got Okeechobee, I know, and then Seminole, Seminole. Yep. and then we're going to Murray. Is that next? I don't know. There's such a big jump. Between the best time of a year to go fishing, that I kind of yeah. just go like, I'll you know figure that out. So you guys don't even have any pre spawn tournaments. No, we got no. Okeechobee, Seminole, Seminole Giant Gap. Be close to the end of April. We have Santee and Murray. Is it Murray <coughs> and Santee? Wow, so Murray and like, so Santee. Yep. Yeah, at the end of April. Yep. So, and then you guys go. I don't even know where you guys go. We go to Sabine. <laughs> How do we not know this? We should know that. Gosh <laughs> dang, guys. And then I know we go to St. Clair, St. Lawrence. We're getting ready to start the season, man. I know. I just uh, I just type in Google Earth whenever I get the email and ride on down there. <laughs> <laughs> right in Google Maps. You don't even look at the sucker. Oh, yeah. We got Santee, then Lay Lake, April 10th. Lay, that's it. Is it a- is April? May. I thought it was May. No, I'm sorry. These are the off-limit dates. Okay. Oh, the pre- oh, he's he's, he's going to get ready to do some work. That means he's, already he's getting ready to do some work. He's going to put some work in. Then Sabine some work River, in St. Clair, practice. Champlain, St. Lawrence. Okay, so now out of all of those events, what is the one that you're looking forward to the most? And why? Santee has to be. Santee Just yours. for the way that I like to fish. Yeah. I mean, just gonna be, there'll be some off bed then. You'll be able to catch them doing literally whatever you want to do. And I mean... You can do anything there and catch a seven pounder. You know, like thirty pound bags get weighed in all the time. It's it's unbelievable. So that that has to be it. And if he says a different one, I'll be shocked. Yeah, I'm gonna say a different. I'm gonna say it's St. Clair. Just just the for the side of Santee. Yeah, it's fun to catch bass there, but it's also really sketchy to drive your boat. It there. is. <laughs> so that's half the battle. Yeah. They're just getting out of there without tearing the bottom out of your boat. Jeez, yeah, um, that. So yeah, St. Saint, Saint Clair's fun. 
Yeah. Saint Clair Saint. I've, I've actually only been to Saint T one time, but like it's it's a cool place. Yeah. I mean, I've heard good things about it. I've watched some stuff, and it's like it seems like a lot of fun. So since you're working on the floating fly, which tournament are you going to catch them on a floating fly next year? Because <laughs> you wouldn't see, be working on it if you see, didn't I catch don't want. I don't want to necessarily tell you that one now. I'm working on yeah. that for a reason. You yeah. see. Um, Actually, I'm going to catch him at, at, at Toho. At Toho? That's what I'm going to figure. Yeah. That was the it one that sense. I was really working hard on. Because yeah, like the whole yeah. key is, is understanding that they've never seen it there. It's like Alabama rig, you yeah. see. The float and fly technique in, 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 in Florida. And if you can really set it up on a slip bobber in like three foot, you you, you pitch it next to the mats. And, with a worm. And, no, no you pitch it next to the mats with, 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 with a shad looking hair jig. And, and the thing is, they're so used to seeing those those shiners they come out there and think it's a shiner need it yeah and then you after you get the bite you need to sit down and pray they swim away from the <laughs> well you don't use a dang spinner rod you actually you flip better them. not you flip them yeah that's the key it's like it's, it's a different it's break. like crappie fishing but for six to ten pounders yeah you know what i'm saying <laughs> no that's that's that <laughs> five shiners anyway i mean that that that's one thing that i mean yeah that's, that's definitely i think a lipless crank bait something i want to i want to work on a little bit too but i'm like yeah, there's there's a couple different things but yeah you live in a decent area for a lipless crank bait a lipless crank bait the problem is if you find a place they're just loaded in it don't matter how you're real sucker yeah it does not matter so but you, you want to go grind with the lipless that's yeah. the key figure out how to trigger them that's the key is yeah. if, you, if you go and you just like you find a little place and they're just loaded up there, you cast the thing, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter what. Square bill. Yeah. yeah. Flat or side. Or swim bait, flat yeah. side. You just you catch them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you actually learn the nuances within it. That's the that's when you really separate yourself, I feel like, within a technique is understanding the nuances. So you need to go out with lipless after they've been beat on for three months. Yeah, like and if you can still catch them, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Now you know. But yeah. the thing is, is like a lipless bite is so Situational. You have big rain, it's warm, they slide up, it mm-hmm. works out, water gets clear, and doesn't really go down. So like it's a very situational. That's what I was going to say. When was the last time there was a lipless derby? Would have been what? The classic and not I mean, Gunnersville, like, plays yeah. all the time, but like, right. you know, the grass. And so that's a different thing is like also like throwing lipless in like, yeah, like hard cover, like throwing a lipless on like rock and, and cra- gravel right. and like, the gravel bars and stuff like that, and that's completely different than what puts on on grass. Right. And so there's nuance within within each of those, and I think there's like, Olympus is a very actually you know is as simple as it is. There's a lot there. And now they have suspended ones. Have you seen those? Yeah, I have. Have yeah. you have you caught any on that? I haven't even thrown it. I, I, I do have. I do have a couple of them. I do too, yeah. but I don't know if that really. It's interesting because I think that like a lot of times, with like a, a lip list, like. You're triggering the bite. All right. the time. Where, like, it's just like a lipless like a suspending. Stops. Doesn't do lip, it. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe a jerk bait. I do have some. I'm sure. I mean, you have a couple of suspending ones, too? I have one. Yeah, I, I, don't I just. Know where it's at. If, you have, if you have one and you don't know where it's at, it's not very good. I've got, a lot of, I've got a lot of baits. You like must that. not have it on your list you're trying to work on. <laughs> but, hey, I'm going to tell you right now. That's, that's one thing that I've wanted to work on is. See, you're talking about all this other stuff, yeah. and you still circle back to the same things that you catch bass on. Mm-hmm. The same confident stuff that you still catch bass on. And it's like, my biggest thing is getting ready for the season. I do all this prep and all this crap, and I'm like, dude, I only need like 10 rods. Right. It's the same 10 rods in my boat everywhere I go. And I know you got 40 in your boat, but you still use the same 10 rods, regardless whether you got 30 or not. Cause you're a tackle junkie, but you're. I don't know about that. I feel like he uses a lot of rods. He does, but even for him, no. I how use many times every do you bait catch there him? Is. But do you catch him off some dumb, dumb stuff? All right, all, uh, not all, all right. the time. Not all the time. You I'll, do. I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay, there's a tournament. I don't say what it is because I don't want anybody to like go back and actually look and see what it was and what, what I was doing. So there's a tournament <clears throat> that I had this idea. I rigged the spade up. Carolina I, rigging I, a square bill. Dang it, stop talking. So, I literally rigged this bait up. I was like, man, I've thought it should work for, for years. I've never caught, I caught like, um, a, maybe like a few two and a half pounders on it, okay? This, this was a, you know, a MLF event. And, like, basically, long story short, it was the only bait I hadn't thrown. 
and I switched to this bait with very little time left, and I freaking maul him. And I end up I losing I the tournament. No, I don't know what you're talking I about. Exactly what I talking end about. up losing yeah. the tournament by like <clears throat> not much. You're too specific now. But like I end up I end up missing mm. yeah. I end up, I end up losing the tournament. But like but like the thing was I f- had no clue. And it was like if I would have done the exact same thing, I might never got those bites. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's certain times you always have to be innovating. I feel like you always do. And when it, where you really see it come into play is day three, day four, after you've done been through the areas mm-hmm. and milled yep. around. But then, you, yeah, you dial in. Yep. But yeah. it's not like so much that it's like changing a whole new deal. It's kind of tweaking what you already yeah. have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You Making know. those subtle adjustments inside of what you have. Yeah, like when you roll in through an area and you're flipping laydowns, and it's like, man, like you go from a jig to a to a soft plastic, or you go to a, a, a soft plastic creature bait to a, a worm. Change weights. That that changing weights. The yeah. subtle things do make a difference. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, it, it does. Like, I mean, like, I mean, there's a big difference between throwing, like, especially during the spawn. Throwing a three-eighths ounce weight and throwing a quarter. Yep. Dude, you could be, like, not, you could be barely getting five bites a day with a half and switch to a quarter and freaking catch 20. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. one on every piece of wood. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it's the finer details. It's, like, it's insane. I mean, I'm not a flipper. You guys know way more about that than I do. I'm just saying I've seen it, so you have to know about it. Cause I know the most about getting five bites a day. <laughs> I don't know a lot about them on every piece of wood, usually. <laughs> 80% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't work today, by the way. No, it wasn't me either. I threw it about I was 200 sh- of them. I was shocked. <laughs> but most of them are striper. Yeah. But most of them are striper that are doing Maybe. that, to be fair. So a lot of them are. Most of them because they're up high and they're doing yeah. that. Like, to be fair, yeah. most of them are. But I had a couple come out of 40. Like, they were on the bottom. I, I realized it doesn't work for every leg. <laughs> I, real quick, I said, God. <laughs> so, there was a scenario. I'm going to give you guys some, like, rundown on this. So, there's a scenario that I literally, like, told these guys. I'm like, I, you know, if you see this on the graph and this happens, you get it, catch them 80% of the time. And I did it all day today. They did it all day today. And nobody caught none of them. So... <laughs> It's, it's no. zero it, bite. It, it, no. Hey, that is actually I did not catch any doing that. Now that you think about it, yeah, I, I did not, and I, and, I, and I was around some. The only time not. was like yeah. at a distance. Distance, yeah, I think so. And, and so, okay, that dives into a little bit of something.